Welcome to the Vitcha Fallout 4 guide. In this video we're going to cover the fastest route to all 20 bobbleheads in Fallout 4. We'll start with the northernmost location, work our way east, and then continue south. For each bobblehead I'll show you the place it's located from the outside and then work from the exterior to the interior of each landmark so you know exactly where to go. I've also done my best to clear out all the enemies at each location as well as not capturing footage until after progressing any potential mission as to avoid any spoilers. And lastly, if you know what bobblehead you're looking for specifically, they're all time stamped in the description so you can easily skip to the desired point in the video. Alright, let's get started. The first bobblehead's probably the easiest one to find in the entire list, but obviously the list wouldn't be complete without it, so we're going to have it. Now during the very early stages of the game, when you're asked to go to Concord, which is just south of Sanctuary if you follow the road, you'll find yourself at the Museum of Freedom. Just fight your way into the Museum of Freedom in Concord. Once inside the museum, clear it out, and in the room where you first met Preston, you'll find a bobblehead on the desk there by the computer. The bobblehead gives a permanent stat increase of plus one to perception. There we go. Alright, the next bobblehead is good for all the hackers out there. The science bobblehead gives you an extra attempt while hacking, and to find it you have to head over to the Malden Middle School. The school is located east of Sanctuary but north of Diamond City. After entering the middle school and heading into its basement, you'll find that it's actually the location of Vault 75. Once inside the vault, you'll come across several doors that require a key card to enter. I have to find the card. To obtain the key card, you'll have to make your way through the vault until you find a replica of a surface diner. Need to find the card. The last enemy here has the card. After obtaining the access key card, just head back to the doors that were previously locked. Make your way through this section of the vault and then you'll eventually find the bobblehead on top of the desk that's overlooking the subterranean diner. Bingo. The Charisma bobblehead is probably the most convoluted to obtain of the entire 20 bobblehead collection, but let's talk about how to get it. First off, you have to be level 10 or higher and make your way to the Parson State Insane Asylum. The asylum is almost directly east of Sanctuary on the northern edge of the map. Once at the asylum, you'll have to kill a few guards. 
You're trespassing on private property. Better move along, or- Now that you've killed a guard and you're above level 10, you can start working towards finding the bobblehead. And to do so, you'll now need to find a ghoul named Edward Deegan. Deegan can be found wandering between the bars in three different locations. He can be found in Bunker Hill, Good Neighbor, in the Diamond City Market. I found him here in Bunker Hill, and after speaking with him, he'll tell you to go to Cabot House. This will start the quest chain you must complete in order to enter the asylum where the bobblehead is located. After about four or five quests, Jack Cabot will ask you to follow him to the asylum. The Charisma bobblehead can be found inside Jack Cabot's office, on his desk, very close to the elevator, in the administrative area. Yes. All right, for the next one, we're gonna head east of the asylum to the Saugus Ironworks. Here you'll get the explosive bobblehead, which adds 15% more damage to all explosive damage. Once inside the iron mill, there are faster routes to the end where the bobblehead is found if you can hack computers but anyone can get there as long as you can find the right route to the blast furnace. Once inside the furnace room, you'll find the bobblehead on the back wall on top of some industrial interface with dials and gauges. Yes! Alright, for the next bobblehead, we're still heading east, this time to Dunwick Borers. Once here at the rock mill, you'll have to make your way down to the bottom of the quarry. Or if you're a power armor enthusiast like myself, you can just take the jumping route. Once inside though, you'll basically be fighting your way through the actual mine shaft, activating lights at terminals along the way. I believe once you reach the fourth terminal, you can find the sneak bobblehead on the table next to a computer there. The sneak bobblehead makes you 10% more difficult to be detected while sneaking. Now just southeast of Dunwick, right on the coast, you can find the Long Neck Lakowski Cannery.
There's not much you need to know to grab this bobblehead. Just follow the path I'm about to show and you'll find the barter bobblehead. Hell yeah. All right, now we're gonna start heading west again before we go south and cover all the bobbleheads from there. For the next one, you're gonna to wanna to head south of Sanctuary to the Corvega assembly plant. This area is usually pretty heavily guarded, so come prepared. That being said, for this one, you don't actually ever need to go inside the plant, but the outside is still heavily guarded, so the statement still stands. Regardless, just stick to the catwalks and head to the very top of the assembly plant to acquire the repair bobblehead. And this is a great bobblehead for power armor and gatling laser builds. It makes fusion cores last 10% longer. For the next one, we're headed almost directly south of Sanctuary to Fort Hagen. It should be noted though that you must progress the main campaign storyline to the point where it leads you to Fort Hagen in order to obtain this bobblehead. If you show up before progressing the story, the elevator that's required to reach the area where the bobblehead is held is boarded off. But after gaining access to the elevator in Fort Hagen, you'll be able to go into the command center where the energy weapon bobblehead is located. Going up. Oh. There we go. The medicine bobblehead is a bit more like the charisma bobblehead wherein it requires some work to obtain it. First off, the location of the bobblehead can be found in Vault 81. The vault is east of Fort Hagen across the river, or just west of Diamond City near the Chestnut Hill Lick Reservoir. To gain access to the vault, you'll need to hand over three fusion cores. Then after entering, you'll see a cat run off. After a series of events, you'll need to go find the cat. Ashes go home. But after which time, upon returning, a sickness has infiltrated the vault. 
At this time, you'll be led to a secret doorway. Follow the path shown here, and you'll make your way to the medicine bobblehead. Yes. For the next one, we're headed to the Boston Public Library, which is east of Diamond City. Here, anyone can gain access to the library through the subway, or there's a door on the side which can be accessed by lockpicking or by passing a charisma check. But once entering, the bobble is on a computer bank in the northwest corner of the library. Hell yeah. Now just a few buildings over to the east of the Boston Public Library you can find the Trinity Tower. And inside the tower you can find the melee bobblehead which adds 25% critical damage to melee attacks. And to obtain this bobblehead, all you have to do is fight your way to the top of the tower and it will be there waiting for you. There we go. For the speech bobblehead, you'll need to progress the main story campaign until you reach the point where your objective is to find Nick Valentine. Once reaching this point in the story, you'll be tasked with venturing into the Park Street Station, which will then lead you to an underground passage to Vault 114.
Do some clearing. Follow this route and you'll find the speech bobblehead once you reach the overseer's office in Vault 114. Now heading slightly northeast of Park Station, you'll want to enter the Mass Fusion Building to obtain the Strength Bobblehead. After making your way into the building, you can find the bobblehead at the very top. Once reaching the top floor, jump over the couch here and the bobblehead can be found on top of the statue head hanging off the wall. Excellent. For the lock picking bobblehead, you want to go to the northeasternmost point of the peninsula on which Diamond City is located. This place is a little confusing because you actually have to make your way through some of the building's walls to find your way down to the basement and then down to the sewer system. Once there though, just follow this route until you find the room lit up by a burning trash can. Next to the trash can, on the floor, you can grab the lock-picking bobblehead. Nice. For the next one, we're headed way down south to Vault 95. It's right by the edge of the glowing sea. Once inside the vault, just follow the route shown here you'll find the Big Guns Bobblehead, which permanently increases critical damage with heavy weapons by 25%. After making your way down the elevator and fighting through the inner workings of the vault a bit, you can find the bobblehead on top of a radio in a living quarter area. Now heading east of Vault 95, you'll find the Gunner's Plaza, where the small gun bobblehead is located.
Once inside, make your way through the building with the route about to be shown. After you find a doorway with the words on air above it, you know you're in the right place. After going through the door, you'll find the bobblehead sitting on the broadcasting desktop. Alright, we're starting to get to the end here. We're almost as east as you can go on the southmost point of the Commonwealth. And once here at Adam Cat's garage, just follow the path shown here and you can find the unarmed bobblehead on top of the rusty car inside of a mechanic's garage. For the Endurance Bobblehead, you're going to go almost directly south of Adam's Cat's Garage to Poseidon Energy. And Poseidon Energy is almost on the southeasternmost point of the Commonwealth map. Once finding your way to Poseidon Energy, you can make your way to a back entrance if you want to enter through a sub-entrance, or if you have computer hacking skills, you can enter through the front door. Just follow the route here until you find some industrial catwalks. After the catwalks, you'll come to what appears to be an office area. Once here, on top of the desk, you can find the Endurance Bobblehead. Alright, now we're so far east, we're starting to sit on the ocean. And this is where you'll find the Agility Bobblehead. On the southeasternmost part of the Commonwealth, you can find the wreckage for the FMS Northern Star. On the very bow of this rusted, gutted, old metal behemoth, you can find the bobble. Just follow the route shown here and you can't miss it. Alright, last but definitely not least is the Luck Bobblehead. This bad boy is found on a half-sunken ship on an island located off the shore of the Commonwealth. Just head on to the ship, walk up to the top, and you'll find the bobblehead sitting inside a locker there.
Alright guys, I know that was a long one, but thanks for watching. Please hit the like button if you found the video helpful. It really does go a long way with the success and searchability of videos here on YouTube. It helped me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Also, please don't hesitate to check out my content that's much more interesting than this as well as my other Fallout stuff. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Merry Christmas everyone!